Okay, so let me go back and go back through. Settings. Meet visible. All right, guys, so let's go over the trivia for today. Again, you can use this as a tool for the rest of the year. You'll have this as a study guide. A lot of these questions you'll see pop up on assignments. You'll see them pop up on assessments. Okay, so please keep a hold of this. This will help you throughout the year. I need you to get on my Apple Classroom then, okay? So I will share that to you. You know how to do that? No. Okay, I'm going to hit invite. So you go into settings. Do you have your Bluetooth on? Okay, so then you'll see it. Oh, uh, Apple Classroom should be there at the bottom below Bluetooth. Did it pop up yet? No. All right, let, me, let me check it out quick. One second, guys. All right, Colin, calm down over there. Why? What's going on? No. We're planning on going to the gym this morning, right before school. We're at the Y. Yeah. Guess who didn't? Guess who didn't wake up? Guess who didn't show? Chase. Chase. Sleeping in. Yep. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Huh. Well, the early bird gets warm, I guess, right? In your case, it gets the pump. <laughs> Big Papa pump. You know who that is? Big Papa's pump. Uh, that might be an extra credit point on a test. Big Papa pump. He used to be an old wrestler. All right, number one. Which president was assassinated in Dallas, Texas on November 22nd, 1963? Ooh, a couple weeks later, my dad was born. 1963. What happened, Jakari? Who was it? JFK. Good job, JFK. I actually got to visit that place. It was pretty cool. Uh, when I went to when I went on a wrestling team, we went out to Dallas for training, and then we wrestled in Oklahoma. It was pretty pretty fun. And I actually got to see the exact location where he was assassinated, uh, where Lee Harvey Oswald shot him from the warehouse building. It was pretty neat. The grassy knoll, right? The uh, potential other shooter. But uh, it was pretty cool. And I got to see the Mavericks Stadium, and uh, I got to see all the arena. And I got to see the Dallas Cowboys Stadium. It was pretty cool, at t My favorite part was uh, the Cowgirls cheerleading locker room. It was neat. It was neat. Because that's like they have a show and everything, so they had all these cameras in and everything like that. I know what you're thinking. Cameras in a locker room. What the heck's going on there? But it was pretty cool. All right, two. Which two Japanese cities did the U.S. bomb to end World War II? So follow along, guys. If you don't have these, and then you will turn it in at the end, I'll give you points, okay? Which one we got here? For number two. Go ahead, Chase. Nagasaki. Yep, Nagasaki and 
Hiroshima, good job. So Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Just spell it the best you can, okay? Haley, you good with that? Okay. What did Henry Ford name his first mass-produced 1904 model automobile? Go ahead, Colin. The Model T. Good job. The Model T. Good. So we'll get to that when we talk about industrialization towards the end of this chapter here and how the United States is becoming a superior power in the world. And the assembly line helped out with creating more luxury style items for the American people, increasing their wealth, increasing their uh, style of living. All right, who was the leader of Iraq until he was captured by the U.S. in 2005? I think this is one I gave you yesterday, didn't I? I think, Chikari? Saddam Hussein. Good job. Saddam Hussein. So again, spell it the best you can. Saddam Hussein. Right, I think I was saying yesterday, I remember seeing it on the news when I was younger. They went out in the pretty much middle of the desert. They pulled him out of the spider hole. He had like a little bunker underground out in the middle of this desert. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was, it was something that I won't forget, really. He's dead. Now. He's dead. They had a public execution of him. You can even watch that on news, but don't do it here, okay? Don't do it here. I watched it live. I remember watching it live. They had like a viewer discretion as advised on the news, and then they showed it. They showed it. All right, what country did the U.S. go to war with between the years of 1968 and 1975? What do we have here? What do we have here? Rooster, what do you have? No, no, no. Go ahead, Chase. Yep, Vietnam. Good job. So North Vietnam. You guys can just put Vietnam. That's fine. So. Soviet Union. And then United States and UN forces, mostly United States, backed South Vietnam. Six, what was the nickname of the time period after the stock market crash in 1929? Go ahead. Uh, Alyssa, right? Yes. Okay, good. The Great yep, the Great Depression. Good job. The Great Depression. The Great Depression. My grandmother called it GD. GD, and uh, you can probably think of what GD means because she goes, oh, I lived through the era. It was a blank, blank time, GD time. I'm not going to say it, but you guys can probably pick it out. All right. Was Great Britain an ally or an enemy during uh, World War II for the U.S.? Was Great Britain an ally or an enemy? Andrew? Ally. Ally. Yep, good job. So during World War I and World War II. They were an ally. What Caribbean island nation suffered a devastating earthquake in January 2010? January 2010. This wasn't too long ago either. Well, I guess 10 years ago now. Jeez. Didn't seem that long ago. Go ahead, Rooster. Uh, Haiti. Haiti. Yep, good job. Haiti. H-A-I-T-I. -I. Haiti. Good. What was the name of the act that outlawed alcohol in the U.S. during the 1920s? What do we have here? Go ahead, Jakari. Prohibition. It was prohibition, but there is a specific act. So prohibition, this was the 18th Amendment, right? Which was later repealed by the 21st. But what was the act? Does anybody have this one? Haley, do you know it? I thought you saw your hand go up. Anybody, anybody. The Volstead Act. V O L S T E A D Act. The Volstead Act. I believe I spelled it right. I think so. Again, spelling Tri Valley, they spell it D A W G S, so not great with spelling. So, Volstead Act. There you go. Goes along with the prohibition. Okay, we're gonna, we'll talk about that. Uh, this chap, no, 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 chapter three. Okay. What president started the League of Nations after World War One? We know this one. I remember we went over this one yesterday. You know what, Ethan? 
Yeah, good job. Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson. Obviously, that didn't work out. World War II would happen, and obviously, wars just happened not too long ago. Okay. So he thought this was a good idea, which was, okay, and this would be the predecessor to the United Nations, which we have today. We have cooperation amongst countries throughout the world. All right, besides the Twin Towers, which other U.S. building was attacked on September 11th? Does anybody know? Go ahead, Ailey. Yeah, the Pentagon. Good job. The Pentagon. All right, they have videos of that as well. Okay, the Pentagon being attacked by a airplane. You can see it crashing into the Pentagon. Good. Also, one of the flights landed out towards Pittsburgh. Okay. And there's one that was aimed for the White House, but the crew, all well, the people, the passengers, tried to overthrow the, uh, the, the pilots there, not the pilots, but the terrorists that were taking control of the airplane. And it crashed in Western PA. They have a memorial out there, which I'll I'll talk about a little bit more about here in the next couple of weeks when we get closer to 9/11. All right, who was the only United States president to quit while he was in office? It was a little tough. Chase? Nixon. Nixon. Yep. Good job, Nixon. You guys ever see uh, Forrest Gump? Yeah, Forrest Gump. So they have a little clip of him in Watergate, the Watergate scandal. Uh, this was something that the, his Republican Party was trying to spy on the Democratic Party. It's a, a hotel close to Washington, D.C. And Forrest Gump's standing there in his hotel room. He's looking across the, you know, across the street, and he sees all these lights flashing. He goes, hey, there's something going on over at Watergate. And then he, he stops Watergate, gets Nixon caught, and Nixon had to pretty much resign or he's going to get impeached. So if you guys ever see Forrest Gump, that's the part where Nixon kind of got in trouble for spying on the other party. All right. Oh, this is one of my favorites. What QB has won the most Super Bowls in NFL history? Try to mix it up a little bit on this. Colin? Tom Brady. Tom Brady, yep. Six Super Bowl rings. What natural event devastated South, especially New Orleans, in September 2005? I remember this as well pretty, pretty clear. My grandmother actually helped rebuild some of the houses down there, which is pretty cool. I like a missionary. To try to help it help the area. Does anybody know this one? Josh, you know this one? Katrina. Good job. Hurricane Katrina. My one friend had a girlfriend named Karina. And when she always get mad, really mad at us, and I'd be like, oh Hurricane Kar Karina coming at us. Back off. Don't get close. She'll wreck you. What was the nickname given to U.S. soldiers during World War I? I think I talked about this earlier. Yesterday, I think I said it. You guys remember? Uh, Autumn, you remember this one? No? Oh, you do? No. Go ahead, Colin. No. Jakari? Doughboys. Yep, doughboys. Maybe that was the other class. So they call them doughboys because in the Mexican-American War, uh, just recently before War I started, there was a lot of dirt and debris and sand that would fly into the American soldiers' faces. So it looked like they were making bread. Okay, there's, It looked like flour on their faces pretty much. So then they called them doughboys because they look like they're working with bread. So that's just kind of a unique fact. So doughboys. What country was the U.S. enemies with during the Cold War? Talked about this earlier. Kevin, you know this one. No? Are you filling this out as we're going on? Okay. Brittany, do you know this one? Soviet Union. Good job. The Soviet Union. If you have USSR, that's fine as well. Okay. The Soviet Union. Uh, I'll accept it, but looking for the Soviet Union, USSR. Yep. What was the name of Germany's leader during World War II? I oh, wish you know this one, right? What do we know here? What do we know? What's your name? I forget. Hunter. I knew that. My middle name. My middle name. Hunter, what do you have for 17? Adolf Hitler. Good job. Adolf Hitler. 
What do the letters KKK stand for? What, Angel? Ku Klux Klan. Yep. What is the name of the Vice President of the United States? What is the name of the Vice President of the United States currently? It's his name. Haley, you know this one? Mike Pence. Yep, good job. Mike Pence. What right did women fight for during the 1920s? Zaretta, 1919, this happened for them. 1920 was ratified. What was it? Jakari? The vote. The vote. Yep, good job. The vote. And we'll get to it in progressive era. They also fought for the right of equal opportunity in the workplace. Okay. Uh, equal pay, education, so on and so forth. Which terrorist prison did President Obama promise to close when he was elected to office? It's not officially closed yet either. But go ahead. Guantanamo Bay. Good job. Again, try to spell it the best you can. Guantanamo Bay. Huh? So it's set up for, because it's a similar climate to the Middle East, so terrorist groups, uh, things like that, you know, because when you look on the equator, it's very similar to where that area is at. So they try to keep the same climate, same temperature, so it's not too brutal or harsh conditions for the prisoners. 22, what famous female American disappeared while flying a plane across the Atlantic Ocean? Oh, yeah, here, Angel. Yep, Amelia Earhart. Good job. Amelia Earhart. What nickname was given to the people who supported the war in Vietnam? You said it earlier, Colin. Hawks. Hawks. There you go. Hawks. All right. So there's hawks, obviously a bird of prey. It's aggressive. And then the people that were against the Vietnam War, they were called doves. Peaceful. You guys get it? Okay. 24. What was the name of the wall that was built in Berlin, Germany after World War II? One should be easy. Shikari? The Berlin Wall. Yeah, there you go. The Berlin Wall. The Berlin Wall. Okay, that was separating East and West Berlin. Obviously, Soviets controlled the Eastern part of it, communism, and then the Western part of it was controlled by the Allies, the United States with capitalism, free business, private business. Okay. 25. What U.S. naval base was attacked on December 11th, 1941? which pushed the U.S. into World War II. Ethan, what do you have for this one? Pearl Harbor. Good job. Pearl Harbor. Awesome. All right, here we go. People matching. Top left, we went over this one. What letter? Rooster? C. Franklin Roosevelt. Good job. So president during the Great Depression, World War II. And what number? 11. Yep, can find a wheelchair. All right, we talked about that yesterday, so we'll, so we'll just keep moving on so we can get over some of the other stuff I want to. All right, who's this next guy here? Who's that? What letter? Chase? E. e, Osama bin Laden. Good job. What number do you have? Five. Five. Good job. Yep. Killed in private residential compound May 2nd, 2011. Good. So you guys ever see the movie Zero Dark Thirty? That's movie pretty much telling you about the, the plans for it and everything like that. All right, who's this guy here? What letter? What letter? Brittany, what do you have? G, Adolf Hitler. Good. And what number? Eight. Yep, starting World War II. His invasion of Poland. Okay. And his aggressive expansion of Germany. Next guy here. Next guy. Autumn, who do you have? I, John F. Kennedy. Good job, JFK. And what number? Yep, good job, President of the United States. Only served three years in office because he got assassinated. Sad, sad. All right, next person. Who do we have? Josh. Hey, Rosa Parks. Good. And what number? Six. Six. Yep. Refuse to move the back of the bus. Okay, we'll get to that when we talk about the civil rights movement. All right, next person, far right, top line. Who is that? Who is that? Colin? H. H, good job. Harry S. Truman. And what number? Yep, responsible for ending World War II. He dropped the A-bombs on Japan to end the war. Good. All right, here we go. Bottom line, who's this? We all should know her. Alyssa? 
L, good job, Hillary Clinton. And what number? Two. Two, yep. First lady, New York State Senator, served as the country's secretary of state. 2016, ran for president. Okay, who's the next person here? You all should know him as well. Chikari, who's that? Okay. okay, Barack Obama, good. What number? Nine, good job. 44th Commander-in-Chief of the United States. All right, right beside Barack Obama, who do we have? Hunter. E. Whoa. What number? Or what letter? D. D. Yep, Martin Luther King Jr. I was going to say, it's not Osama Bin Laden. D. Martin Luther King Jr. Good. What number? Seven. Good job. Strong leader during the Civil Rights Movement. All right, next guy here. His dad was actually born in Eville, which is pretty cool. I'm sure you guys didn't know that. Maybe you did. His dad was born in Eville, PA. Well, he lived here. Who's that? Andrew. F. F. Dwight D. Eisenhower. Good job, Ike. What number? What number? I can't find it. Can't find it? I want to help him out. Shikari? Nope. Ethan. Four. Good job. It's four. All right. He's not only president, but also served as a general in the military during World War II. The Supreme Allied Commander. Oh, the astronaut here. Who's that? Colin? E. B. Neil Armstrong. Good job. What number? Three. Three. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Good job. And the last one here, the cowboy. Robin Williams played him in the Night of the Museum. He actually looks a lot like him, which is pretty cool. We have uh, Brittany. Jay, good job. Teddy Roosevelt, what number? Ten, good job. President during, or at the beginning of the 1900s, my distant cousin later became president too, which was FDR. All right, he's up on the bulletin board over there. Teddy Roosevelt will be talking about him a lot this chapter and next. All right, is there any questions on that, guys? Good. All right, please now work on the pretest. It should be it should be posted to Google Classroom right now. Yep, right down here. I think there's only let me see seven questions. Eight, eight. That shouldn't take you too long. So please work on that right now. I'll give you a couple minutes, and that shouldn't take you too long. So just circle it, circle it, and we'll go over it together, and I'll give you points for it. Does that work? And yeah, not too hard. Don't tell any of your classmates, though, that have class later. Keep them on the edge of their seat. What do you think, Haley? Yeah. Give you guys a couple more minutes to finish that up.
Y'all finish, Andrew? Okay. Does anybody need more time? All right. One more minute. One more minute. Jakari finished. Okay. All right. So number one, people move from country to the cities causing overcrowded living conditions. All right. So if you didn't, if you have it wrong or uh, if you didn't get to the question, just fill it as we go on. Okay. And again, use this as a study tool. You'll see these pop up on the test. Okay. Right. One, people move from the country to the cities causing overcrowding living conditions. What do we have for number one? Andrew, what do you have? You got it, sir. Urbanization. Good job. Urbanization. All right. So we'll talk about this here soon. The uh, modernist versus the fundamentalist. This was a huge struggle in uh, American history. And even today, you can say, uh, I know my grandmother always used to say, oh, you should be going to church. You should be going, uh, you know, to you know, reading a book, things like that. So fundamental traditional values rather than me playing video games and sleeping in on Sundays. So I'm sure you guys all have similar similar things there with that. But uh, we'll talk about that here soon when we get to the 1920s and how that kind of changes with industrialization and urbanization. All right, so two aspects of life clashing. Two, book that exposed the horrible conditions in the meat industry. Jakar, what do you have, man? A, medium rare. That's the way I like my steaks. But no, that's not it. Close. Close. Listen, what do you have? High stakes? No. Love me some stakes, though. I do. All right, last one here. It's the jungle, guys. The jungle. Okay. So on the bulletin board, you'll see it. The jungle. It's really small. I'm sorry. But uh, there's the, the picture of the book right there. Yeah, it's right there, Ethan. And you have to really turn your head back like an owl to see that. <laughs> so the jungle. Upton Sinclair, he wrote this book. And describes the horrible conditions in the meat packing industry. I don't know if you talked about. Do you guys have Mr. Dietrich? Yeah. So with agriculture, this he he might have mentioned this book a little bit, but before all these health and safety regulations were pushed on industries, these people would just kind of throw these meat together without pre or preparing it, cleaning it. Let's say they dropped on the floor, they just pick it back up and throw it there. Obviously, in the 1900s too. What does stinky meat, stinky food attract? Rodents, right? Animals. So all these rodents would come in. So to kill the rodents, what do you think they did? Laid poison on the floor. Okay. So to kill these mice. And oftentimes, whenever the meat would fall on the floor, they'd pick up some dead mice and poison, rat poisoning. Just throw it in together. We'll mix it up and we'll package it and send it out to the stores. Does that sound good? Yeah, whatever. Let's do that. So it was kind of disgusting. And the jungle, Upton Sinclair, described this in his book to try to bring awareness to what was going on. So we'll get to that a little bit later, a little bit more in detail. Three, before the progressive era, women were – I'm sorry, girls. I'm sorry. Shikari, uneducated. uneducated. Yep, they didn't have the right to an education, right, equal opportunity in the workplace, okay, right to vote. All right, so throughout the progressive era, we'll talk about famous women progressives, all right, fighting for women's suffrage, and uh, yeah, some good stuff. I think Mr. Shutt says it. What? The only thing they women were good for at the time were what? Popping yeah, babies? Pop that's it. Yeah, that's what he says. I'm like, oh, Mr. Shutt. Oh, okay. Four. This amendment to the Constitution of the United States outlawed alcohol. What amendment was that? I think I said it with the trivia here. Ethan, you know? 18th. Yep, good job. 18th. Easy way to remember it. So the 18th Amendment outlaws alcohol. You can't drink alcohol when you're 18. 21st Amendment repealed that amendment. So when can you drink alcohol? When you're 21, right? Okay, that's an easy way to remember it. Okay. All right. 
when one business takes over small ones and is the only option for consumers. It's a board game. I love it. Haley, Monopoly. Good job. Monopoly. Leader of the Rough Riders and progressive president of the United States. One of my favorite presidents. Andrew? Teddy Roosevelt. Good job, Teddy Roosevelt. He did a lot of things, a lot of things. Seven, leading figure during the progressive era who fought for women's equality. Kevin, what do you have for this one? Seven. Good job, man. Florence Kelly. Florence Kelly. So she was a women's suffrage, uh, well, women fought for women's suffrage and uh, tried to push for equal rights in the workplace, education, you name it. Eight, author that uncovered the disgusting unfair conditions in the workplace in many United States factories. So this man was famous for his photography. He'd go around and take pictures of the living conditions, the industries. Uh oh, something screeching down the hallway. What was that SpongeBob character? I forget his name, the Hashling and Slasher. That's what I think of every time I hear that noise going down the hallway. It's not Orville Redenbacher. He makes the popcorn, so we can kind of cash him out. Who is it? Go ahead, Chase. Upton yep, Upton Sinclair. Good job, Upton Sinclair. All right, so I talked about him with the jungle. So Jacob Reese will talk about two more with his photography and how he was taking pictures of unsanitary conditions and poor living conditions during the 1900s. Okay. So please turn that in. I'll give you credit for it, okay? Turn that in. I'll give you credit for it. That's some easy points there for you. All right, real quick, I just want to go over two slides. That's it. This slide, which is the title, and then the next slide, which kind of describes a little bit about what we're going to be discussing this chapter. Okay. Let me move this over here so I can stand up. <clears throat> All right. So, again, 1920s, 1919, we'll see women's suffrage, the progressive movement, women fighting for rights in the workplace, education, okay, right to vote. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more in the upcoming chapter. Okay, Florence Kelly, okay, Susan B. Anthony, famous progressives during this time that fought for women's suffrage. All right, who's that guy? He has a nice mustache. Should try to grow it out like him. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. What's his name? What's his name? Hunter? Talked about him just a little bit ago. Yeah, good job. Teddy Roosevelt. So Teddy Roosevelt, famous president. Okay, he was a rough rider during the uh, Spanish-American War. So he actually did some time fighting in the military. He was uh, secretary of the Navy as well during that war which was unique. He's like, you know what? I'm a secretary of the Navy, but I'm still going to go fight. I'm going to go fight. I'm going to join the Rough Riders, and we're going to try to push Spain out of the Western Hemisphere, which is pretty cool. He's going to follow that Monroe doctrine. For the middle class, okay, and his square deal, right? So remember the square deal. We'll be talking about that here soon. So he's a very famous president. So you guys want to just write in your notes, write on a Word doc, these notes that I'm going over here today. Um, yeah. And then the meat packaging plants. So industrialization. All right. So we're going to talk about the three factors of the progressive era that push the progressive era, which we'll, we'll discuss more tomorrow. But the meat package, packaging industry, okay, this was one big uh, problem that Upton Sinclair wanted to try to discuss and bring it to the attention of the American people. You know, how disgusting these were and uh, how, how the, the processes, the uh, kind of the way they prepared the meat and food during the time wasn't appropriate. So this is where we'll see the Food and Drug Administration, okay, being pushed on. Uh, this is where you see the labels on all the goods that you eat. Okay, so if you have a bag of chips, you'll see the label in the back that shows the calories, okay, what's in that item because of different types of allergies people might have, okay, uh, things like that. Medication, same thing. Before this time, medication was just kind of pushed out. 
like in these tubes and these bottles, like, oh, just take this. Uh, this will this will help you out. But really no one knew exactly how they would react to this medication because they had no label on it. There's no description. There's no dosage either. How much should you take of this medication? So this is all up in the air that really no one knew until this time with the Food and Drug Administration. So can you imagine that? Oh, here's some pills to help you with your headache. How many do I take? I don't know. Figure it out. Take the whole bottle, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Can you imagine that? It's crazy. All right. So progressive. What does it mean to be a progressive? What do you guys think? What does it mean to be a progressive? What do you think, Brittany? So it's like that insurance agency, right? Flow on there with her progressive tool gun. She like tries to rate different insurances. So what does it mean to be a progressive? You don't know? Melissa, what do you think? Awesome. Good job. So evolving, changing for the better, right? You're trying to change for the better. All right, so that's probably why they named their business progressive. Okay, you're trying to make progress toward better conditions, employing more innovative ideas newer experimental methods. So you're trying to change for the betterment of society, for the betterment of business, for your workers, which we'll talk about the formation of unions and uh, workers' rights, Okay, where we'll see increased pay, benefits for these workers in industries and different types of organizations. All right, so if you're a progressive, you're looking to move forward in the right direction. The bright road ahead, right? Yeah. So that's why the insurance company Progressive tried to use that as their name. If you want to try to move in the right direction, you're going to go with Progressive to help insure your car, your home, your boat, whatever it might be. And we already discussed it. Why do you think the company would use Progressive? Because that is a great word for moving forward and trying to advance. All right, you guys, good with Progressive. So this movement here, right after the Reconstruction era, the United States is trying to move in the right direction, try to help out their citizens, help out their workers, okay? Try to make better conditions for their people moving forward in, in society, okay? Well, with urbanization and overcrowding, okay, this is going to be a big issue for many people moving forward. So this movement needed to happen in order to try to increase the value, the lifestyle of the American people. All right, is there any questions on that, guys? We good? Okay. I'll talk about the problems of the progressive era, which pushed this progressive era, okay, the problems that emerged, which made the progressive era prevalent tomorrow. All right, I'll leave that up for you for a second. So you can copy whatever you need to down. And that's it for today. There it is. You have what? Two minutes here? Three minutes? Not bad. Right, Jakari? Yeah. So tomorrow I'll have a bell ringer up. So the first thing you'll do, I have a question up on the board. You write down the question and write down the answer to that question. All right? And you'll hold on to those for maybe an upcoming test for points at the end of the week. All right, is there any questions at all? We good? Chase, you good, man? All right, cool. Cool. All right. Oh, Tom Wolf, what's he doing there?